Time now for the Sunday Roundtable, and we have the band back together this week. We're going to make lovely music right now. Democratic political analyst Marianne Marsh and Republican political analyst Rob Gray at the table with us this morning. All right, guys, you just heard Seth Moulton say that the House is still in play, but but Democrats need to change is what he said. I'm, I'm boiling it down, but yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's a matter of change. You need to make the, the election a, ch a choice, not a referendum, right? You just need to be the Democrat versus the Republican and tell them what you stand for, because you stand for all the things that are important in this democracy, rights, fixed inflation and all those things Republicans won't lift a finger to help you but they will certainly do everything they can to hurt you that's Rob, it. Rob what'd you read? I think he's right I mean Seth Moulton comes off and is much more mainstream than most Democrats in the House certainly in the Massachusetts delegation he's more of a Bill Clinton moderate Democrat Democrats had success with with that they've gone way too far to the left which is why it's the bottom of the eighth inning and they're trailing by seven or eight runs in this game. Yeah, but the Republicans have gone so far to the right, and Bill Clinton was 30 years ago, so the world has changed. But if you look at the polling, I mean, uh, with an incumbent Democratic president in power, Democrats have big problems. He's not on the they're ballot. They're swimming against the He's tide. He's not on the ballot. It's one-on-one, -on -one, Democrat versus Republican. I like our odds. Uh, so, well, some people would argue that he is on the ballot, even though his name is not on the ballot. Um, with a stark backdrop in nearly 100 degree weather, President Biden stood in front of a deserted coal power plant in Somerset this past week, listing what he'll do to fight climate change. Enough in light of the reality of D.C. politics, Rob? Well, listen, he's trying to change the subject. And the problem for Joe Biden is that the Monmouth poll that was just out, if you look at the greatest concern, inflation in the economy add up to 63 percent. Climate change, 1%. He's trying to deflect because he's got electoral problems, and that's why he was here, and that's why he's making that point. But I don't think it works. I think the voters won't get scared into voting for Democrats on climate change. Did he do enough, do you think, Mary? It motivates younger Democratic voters. It motivates the base. Those are the people who especially want climate change. And I think it was smart to do it, to say, look, I'm being stopped by Republicans in Mansion too, but here's what you, we could have as a country. And Massachusetts is doing it on its own under Republican governor. States can do it, too. And uh, how happy do you think the Democrats that were not invited to the event <laughs> on that particular day? Uh, just asking, yeah, you know? Right. Yeah, I mean, Air Force One was a flying COVID oh, hot zone, right? Well, yeah. well yeah. one yeah. Democrat who was there was, was kind of the subject of an oops by the president. The congressman who represents Somerset got a shout out from the president. But this is what the president said. Congress eggs, Auchinclaw sauce, where is she? There you go, Jake. Bill Keating, Auchinclaw Congress. sauce, where is she? Marianne, is, is, this, is, this, is this more than a, I, I don't mean typical, but typical Biden flub? Where is she? Where is <laughs> so she? Th the only thing I could come up with is maybe Joe Biden was thinking of Jackie Kennedy, whose stepfather was Auchinclaw, and maybe wow. that's what that wow. came from back wow. in the Wayback Machine, like way wow. back here. But where is that's she? That's a lot of processing. And all, the all the selfies that Jake did on Air Force One with him, I don't think it worked. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's remember in the same speech, Biden claimed that he had cancer, okay? So he's got a, a lot of uh, problems going on in terms of the verbal gaffes. But at the same time, I actually think it's a serious issue. I mean, his age and senility uh, is becoming an issue, not just with uh, Republicans and voters, but with fellow Democrats mm -hmm. who are looking to pounce on him, mm -hmm. put him out of office because of just this thing. They don't think he has what it takes to run again. And the Trump cabinet was trying to get the 25th Amendment against Trump. Let's talk about um, Republicans. Uh, Chris Doty has uh, New Hampshire Governor Chris Sununu coming into campaign and raise money for him. And Jeff Deal has South Dakota Governor Christy Nome stumping for him at an Ernie Bach fundraiser next month. The scale of political justice, do you think, has been balanced here, Rob? Well, listen, I, I think it's pretty equal, but unfortunately for the candidates, I think equally ineffective. I mean, this doesn't do much for those candidates. If they raise a lot of money off it, maybe. but. On the GOP side, we have two candidates who are unknown and underfunded right now, and we're getting very close to Election Day. Uh, equal endorsements? Yeah, I agree with Rob. And it's also about 2024, not 2022. This is an opportunity for Sununu to come here, meet some Massachusetts donors, maybe get some help. For Christy Nome, it's playing in New Hampshire without actually going to New Hampshire. Next item is the T. Go ahead, Clark, if you would put the video on. It, it, this is the, the latest MBTA headache. I, I, I mean headline. A passenger <laughs> actually jumped 
into the Mystic River when an orange line train catches on fire, as you can see, and others are jumping out the window and moving on an active train surface. In other words, there was a train going in another direction when these people are jumping on the tracks. Manager Steve Poftek also needs another $300 million to fix safety issues found by federal investigators. Marianne, is this a political migraine that will never be fixed? No, this is a public safety threat to everybody who rides the T, and Steve Poftek is to blame, as is Charlie Baker, as is the board of, of, of the T, and frankly, the legislature now, too. People have been killed, maimed, and look, people had to jump out of windows and off a bridge to save their lives. This is unacceptable, and unless and until, first of all, Steve Poftek should be fired immediately, and Baker needs to act, the T-board needs to act, and the legislature needs to act. They didn't hold him accountable in the hearings last week. He was very slippery. It's the Oversight Committee now, the only one with subpoena power, that needs to investigate the T and get answers so the next governor can fix the T. The, the well, optics aren't bad, Rob. They're horrible. <laughs> they're, they're horrible. But let's remember, as is Deval Patrick, okay, and even governors before him, I think Rep. Bill Strauss, the transportation chair, is on the right track. It's time just to end the MBTA, to start over from scratch. It's not effective. It can't be managed by either party. Um, it's, it's a big mass of failure, basically. Like a turnpike authority or something like exactly. that. Exactly. Get rid of it. Start over. We're on the record. Stay with us.